Hello, it is time for another story. So the story today is called The Power of Just Starting. Let's begin. Let's go back in our time machine and go back to the year 2006. Now I'm going to pitch an idea to you. Imagine this. I will be starting a reality TV show, the first internet-based reality TV show that is going to be based on my life. And the way that I'm going to do it is that I'm going to take my computer, laptop computer, connect it to this device that will give me wireless internet. It's pretty big. So I got to put my computer and this device in my backpack, and then I'm going to connect a webcam to the computer, and then I'm going to put that webcam on my head. I'm going to attach it to a cap and then wear that on my head. And that's how I'm going to be making a reality TV show where I record my life. Now, this is the best part. Most reality TV shows are recorded and then edited later, and then you can watch it, right? Like buy a DVD or something like that, or VHS. This is not going to be like that. This is going to be streaming online 24 7. This is the idea. Andrew has his hand up. Now, the question is which company is this? And Andrew, yes, which company do you think it is? Huh? GoPro, very good guess. Very good guess. Do we have any more guesses? You can Which... also post in the chat. Yes. Any other guesses about which company this could be? Um, not Microsoft. Not Microsoft. <laughs> okay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell you it's not Microsoft because Microsoft is a much older company that started in the 70s. Wait, so it started in 2006? Uh-huh. And it's a live yeah. TV. So let's do one yeah. more guess and then we'll go Andrew. to the... Uh-huh, Andrew, you can guess again. Twitch. Twitch, that's also a very good guess. That's also a very good guess. So GoPro and Twitch. It's going to be eBay. <laughs> eBay, definitely. All of those are very good guesses. Okay, let's go and uh, hear more about this story. So, back in 2006, this was actually a pitch that a person called Justin Kahn made. First of all, he came up with the idea. But in order to build this thing, he thought there's nothing like this that exists. There's no way to stream live stuff on the internet. This is like 2006 and YouTube had just came out in 2005 and YouTube didn't have any live features. So he thought, of course, this is going, I know a little bit of coding, you know, I'm an okay coder, but I need some people that I can work with on this thing because it's going to be really hard. So he went to his friends and he told them about the idea and then he tried to convince them to start a company together. Now, so again, the idea was this, the first internet 24 seven live reality TV show based on Justin's life. Now, before I go ahead with the story and I show you who he started working with, what do you guys think about this idea? Like try to think, you know, put yourself back in 2006, where I know most of you weren't even born by then, but what are you thinking here? Is this a good idea? Is this a bad idea? What do you guys think? I don't know. Andrew, yeah, go ahead. Every day. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. That's what some of them uh, said. Alex, go ahead. What do you think? I don't, I don't think it's like, I feel like it's sort of good, but sort of bad because you wouldn't use it. Like, who'd really watch it? Like, just go on, on online and watch a random video of someone's life. Right. And, and like, and why would the guy want to do it? If like, he'd have to have a camera. He has to wear a cap. Forever, mm -hmm. he'd have to have a camera on his cap, which must be quite heavy. So very, all of those are very good points. Forget the backpack. And uh, a, a heavy backpack. Uh, Sydney, yes, yes. 
Go ahead, Sydney. It's um, Justin TV. It's Justin TV? Yeah. That's that's the right answer. We, we also uh, have some, uh, some uh -huh. uh, opinions in the chat. Dennis is saying it's a good idea. And wait, I'm going to read your, uh, your, your full nickname. <laughs> Robarino Tino uh -huh. says it's pretty okay. Idea. Pretty okay idea. Okay, so we got a good idea, pretty okay, and terrible ideas. All right, so let's go ahead. So he actually manages to get three of his friends to um, work on this with him. Now, you might think they, they all thought that it was a good idea, right? Because they ended up working on it. Not the case. Um, I know the story of one of them, which is Michael Seibel on the right side. And he said that it's uh, the worst idea that he's ever heard. And that's what he said multiple times and to a, friend. Uh, to a friend. But he still ended up working, I suppose, because Justin was just su such an amazing person to work with. I don't know why, but he, he ended up working on, on this idea. So anyway, they had their team now. So this is Emmett, Kyle, Justin and Michael. And uh, Emmett, uh, Justin and Michael went together to Yale University. That's how they became friends. And then Kyle is someone who met, went to MIT. And so they became friends later. Now, this is this was their team and three of them were coders. So, of course, you know, this is a new type of technology that they have to invent. So they need a lot of coders. Right. And uh, of course, Michael was the one who wasn't a coder. He studied uh, political science at Yale University. So he ended just being the dude who did everything else. Now, what do you guys think that everything else means when it comes to building a uh, tech company? Yeah, Andrew. Marketing, mm -hmm. PR directing, financing, everything. There's there's a lot of stuff. Not only that, he did those things. He actually became CEO. Um, and he also did other things because they all started this company, which Sydney said it, they called uh, it uh, Justin.tv. And uh, they were all living in a, an apartment together and it was very small and they were just working all day. And so Michael made sure that they had a bank account, that the house was clean and that everyone had something to eat while everyone else was coding. Very important things that you normally don't think about in a normal company when you just go to an office and work and come back and you get your paycheck. But in a really young company, this is how it is sometimes, you know, uh, you really have to save money wherever you can because you're just starting something. So that's how it was. And then they spent a couple of months and in March of 2007, they finally launched the website. And this is how it looked. They had the video on the left and then the comments. They had a comment section as well on the right. Now, you got to love the design of the old. Got to love the uh, 06 uh, design. Yeah. And um, you got to love what they're saying in the chat. He's <laughs> playing really bad music. <laughs> right. Uh, so what he was, um, what, uh, what happened then was that the, the website launched and people actually started using it. Not that many people, but as you guys said, this, was, this wasn't a very good idea, right? And one of the reasons because it wasn't a good idea was because Justin is not real exactly, uh, exactly Brad Pitt or Leonardo DiCaprio or Kim Kardashian, people that, uh, uh, a lot of people know about he's just you know a person who's like 23 years old he's uh he, no one knows him so it doesn't really make for a very good reality tv show and what also happened was that because they were building the website that people were using to look at their lives what ended up happening is that most of the time they were just sitting uh, right next to their computers and coding and people said that this is totally boring you guys code all day do something interesting so after a couple of months, they understood, OK, it's not going very well. But the users also had another piece of advice for them. And that was, you guys are really boring, but how can I use your uh, website to stream something that I want to do? And that's when they thought, huh, there's something there. So they spent another couple of months coding and then they launched this um, thing where you can come on as a broadcaster. Now, they didn't allow anyone at this point. They allowed about 60 people to do that. And then after that, they saw, OK, this is going really well now. Let's just make it a platform so that anyone can stream online. And that's where they changed that initial idea to this idea. Andrew, you want to say something? A, yeah. Um, so Andrew and then Ryan. How, uh, before they started letting other people stream, mm -hmm. how, how, how do they profit? Like, is this paid to use, like paid to watch? 
very good question. Um, the the way that they made money, and they actually didn't make very much money at this point. They were they were basically burning money because they got a couple of investors, uh, but they didn't really have any idea to make money. But uh, when they started this, uh, letting other people stream, they started making through advertising. So it would be just click ads that they had on the website that they would make a little bit of money on. Yeah, Rayan, what did you want to say? So this is how Twitch became a thing. Uh, that's what we're gonna see a little bit later. That's a uh, that's a good guess. Um, so, um, this this was the new idea. Now, what what do you guys think about this idea? What do you guys think about this idea? Andrew is giving the thumbs up, right? This is obviously a good idea, right? Why? Because you know, fourteen years later, we have YouTube Live and Twitch, as you guys mentioned. Uh, so this is obviously a good idea. But if you think about the initial idea that they had. There was some of this idea in that initial idea. The live streaming part was there. The, the thing that made it bad was that it was about Justin's life. So think about this. This is something that a lot of companies go through multiple times is that they start with something and then they change over time. So that's what happened with them. Now, after this, the website kind of exploded and people just started streaming uh, basketball matches, Champions League. There were other people that were just starting out that used it as a platform to live stream their life and create shows. And uh, this is actually a lot of people use this thing before they got famous on YouTube, because even YouTube at this point didn't have this live streaming feature. And what do you think was another category of things that people were using the website to stream? Who wants to guess? Yeah, Andrew, go ahead. Like Twitch and say video games? Uh-huh. Yep, that's exactly right. There were not that many people, but there was like a couple of percentage of the people that were on the website. But this thing in particular had a great following. There was a great community behind the people that were uh, streaming video games. But it was still a very small part of the website, right? So the people that started this, the founders, they were like, yeah, that's really cool. But there's also a million other things that people are streaming. Uh, Sydney? Mm -hmm. did that is a go good question i don't think he did i think he started on youtube but um, maybe i'm wrong about that yeah so this is at this point is still 2007 and the website started growing now people started using it and so they were growing year over year you know good growth and then around 2010 2011 their growth started to stagnate a little bit and then at this point, they're like, OK, so, you know, we got to think about something else because we're not growing anymore. And what they did at this point was that there was one of the founders, Emmett, the one on the all the way to the left. He was the person who really used the website. They didn't really actually use their website that much, but he really used it to watch uh, uh, gamers stream. And so he said, you know what, I've been looking at the growth rate for the streamers and there is such a great community and they've been growing so fast. I know that it's a small part of the website, but I really think that we should turn the website into focusing more on this. And the other founders were kind of like they weren't gamers themselves. They weren't that much into games. They were like, OK, that's a good idea. And so what they did was that at, at this point, Justin TV had the gaming section and that was um, changed to be Twitch TV. And Emmett at this point replaced Michael as CEO because you know he was the person who was the most passionate about games. And so that's what happened. And then this is what it looked like back then. Um, you know, the gaming uh, stream of, the, uh, of their uh, website. Now in 2014, three years later, this was really taking off. And at this point, Justin TV was dissolved as a company. And then it was rebranded into, there were actually two companies that came out of it. One was called Social Cam. And then the other one, the one that became famous was of course, the one that you guys have already guessed. That is what became Twitch. So this is how uh, Twitch was started. Now at this point, uh, Twitch was already very big on the on online, but still this is um, what six six years ago, and 
the, the big industry when it comes to uh, streaming of games was a lot smaller uh, back then. And so what I really like about this is that um, Emmett uh, at that point, and this is 10 years ago now, he had the foresight to see, uh, you know, to predict basically that if it just continues growing like this, even if it's really small, in just a couple of years, it's going to be, become really big. And that is actually, I think, the main reason that um, uh, Twitch is the leader when it comes to uh, streaming of, uh, of games, you know, for, for streamers. It's even bigger than YouTube Live or, or YouTube as a platform. Now, one last thing that I'll mention is that at this point, when a company becomes this big, uh, a lot of other bigger companies um, take notice of this. And that's what happened uh, with Amazon, who was already very, very big at this point. And they said, we want to buy you. They said that to Twitch. And so in 2014, Twitch was bought by Amazon. Anyone care to guess how much, uh, uh, how much they went for? What do you guys think? Sydney, go ahead. Two billion. Two billion, Andrew said. What did you say, Sydney? 1.5 million. That's a very good guess. Uh, Alex, go ahead. 7.251 billion. Okay, about seven and a half billion. Also, a very good guess. So. 900 million. 900 million. Good guess as well. So the um, the amount uh, that they were bought for was just under a billion dollars. It was 970 million dollars. And what started as a horrible idea, uh, unanimously, <laughs> a horrible idea, in 2006 became a company worth so much that it was sold to um, Amazon for a billion dollars. So obviously, you know, what happens at that point is that the people who start the company usually own a lot of shares. So everyone became very wealthy and they're all doing other things now. But uh, yeah, that's the story of Twitch. That's how how um how things can go uh, as long as you just you know i think it all started with justin khan he really wanted to work with his friends he had an idea that he thought was you know it, it could work and that's what it turns out uh, into so i really like this story because a lot of time people think that the people that uh, become big and you know uh, come up with things like the iphone and the uh, you know virtual reality and everything like that they somehow are different type of people that when from a very young age, they know exactly what they want to do and what they want to create. And they just get a bunch of other people to work for them. And then suddenly you have the iPhone. That's not how it happens. This is how it happens. Um, so if you thought that, you know, Steve Jobs knew about the idea for the iPhone decades before it happened, that's not how, not how it goes. So that was the story for today. Any questions uh, Sydney, before we uh, end? You have a hand up. Mm -hmm. Does Amazon still own Twitch? Does Amazon still own Twitch? Amazon does indeed still own Twitch. They do. But Twitch is basically able to run entirely like its own company with its own CEO. So even though they own them, they're they're very much running like they used to before. Mm. All right, guys. So that was the story for today. Um, uh, guys, I uh, people couldn't uh, join the breakout rooms, so I closed and opened them again.